institutions such as Global Fund, Ghana Health, uh, Ghana Health Service, WFP, Plan International. We process also we have grants into the local market. Next time, I'm going to learn from Charles. Maybe come with some grant and some other things. Within the soil value chain, I mean, I think that's the commodity of interest. When we get here, the commodity of interest is soil. So within the soil value chain, over the three years, we've really grown. Um, we apply extrusion to process soil into full fat soil okay, for the pottery industry. We source our technology from the US, uh, from Istanbul. And, um, currently, we're doing about 300 metric tons of soy, processed soy a month, and that is what technology can do, food technology. And uh, the conference at uh, Indianapolis opened my eyes to a lot of US technology. And we also extract oil from food fat soy. We are positioning ourselves to take advantage of the amplifiers program, which is a USD which program in Ghana to uh, strengthen poultry production. So we've organized some free um, seminars for poultry farmers. We are going to position our laboratory for farmers to test their feed uh, going forward. The combined market size that's with the brewery, the retail market runs into millions of dollars. And I think this opportunity does not only exist in Ghana but across West Africa. And that is what all of us should be here marking ourselves towards. What are the challenges as a manufacturer? Because I'm speaking to the topic of manufacturing within the context of trade, food technology, and nutrition. And what are the challenges that confront us, which also cut across most emerging economics, inflationary pressures, um, resulting in increases in private and interest rate. In Ghana, the borrowing interest rate is around 33%. So uh, when Mike Martin yesterday said they have a, a leasing program of 12 to 18 percent per year's mobile, they say, how can we tap into? That's a challenge. Um, sometimes, about two years ago, for almost eight months, we didn't work because race didn't do well, soil didn't do well. And I tried to import soil from Soka in the US, raw grains to see what we can do with calling body. So that's also a huge challenge. But there are two sides of the same coin. A water half glass could be defined in different ways. Either the glass half full of water or half empty of water, depending on how one sees it. And we think that irrespective of the challenges that confront us, the opportunities are enormous that one has to be able to tap into. What are the opportunities? High population growth. Uh, about some 20 years ago when I finished my first degree, the whole university was about 5,000. So very few graduates. Today, that same university, about 30 to 40,000 people pass out every year. Tells you the middle class, the growing middle class, that comes with sophistication in nutrition and how they want to live and live well. So it's a huge opportunity for us. Our country is a middle income country. Across West Africa, many economies today are growing to become middle income countries. So it comes with a huge advantage. The population is becoming literate. They don't just eat anything. Um, I was talking with someone and he said, I looks like I'm growing fat. I said, he said, no, how to keep shape so that in my 60s I can still be smart. And I said, wow. 
So we're not just eating anything. And this is where Girish and Kadi's presentation become crucial for us as entrepreneurs and as manufacturers. What is it that we can do to blend nutrition to ensure that we deliver the expectation and the emotional aspiration of our consumers? So the population is, is an opportunity. Uh, there is a huge governmental and developmental certification policies and programs across emerging markets where you have to say, I did this, where organizations said, this is, I want to do this for my corporate social responsibility, and all those things. So how do we also tap into those opportunities? And um, governments have some fiscal policies towards our people. So these opportunities enable us to see huge light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, by our position. In fact, why I resigned from Unilever was when we launched the first iodine commercial sort of Italian market. I was then a sales and marketing executive. And when you go into the market, the women and the old ladies who sell salt will start insulting you. And they said, You've sold everything. Salt that your mothers also sold to take care of you by taking that business out of us. So it becomes a huge thing. And then our chairman said, You are not selling salt. Tell them you are selling health. <laughs> and that, if even some of you can identify the huge opportunity in food fortification, some of you can end businesses and grow businesses that can end millions and it will be submitted with me. So I was the first company in Ghana to, to do voluntary fortification of all our foods. So it's a differentiating parameter. And that endeared us to many multinationals and many development partners such as GAME, uh, WFP, GIC. Currently, we are the uh, anchor partners for the affordable food, nutritious food for women in, in, in Ghana, in West Africa, with GIC, with Asa Wish. And I think that's based on that, that uh, my good friend, uh, my Ghanaian brother, Josh, I have also become. Uh, a supply chain partner for which, but I am now coming to learn how to grow and walk, but I'm sure I'm going to run very fast with which. <laughs> and uh, uh, it's based on that that I'm going to learn a lot in Nigeria, in Uganda, and all over. We are very, we are a regulatory compliant company. Because one of the things that I learned is that in the world of business, it is like a sea full of killer sharks and whales. And especially when you are coming and you are small, you think nobody is looking at you. But the moment you begin to make strides, the multinationals begin to look at what they can do to kill you. And one of the things that can destroy you forever is falling in the hands of regulatory agencies. So we try to ensure that what we are doing, what are the regulatory agencies, what are the regulatory framework, and we comply with okay. it. So we are Food and Drugs Authority compliant, we are Drama Standards Board compliant, we are all the subject regulatory agencies, we are compliant. We, in going forward, our profitability hinges on new product development, and we're going to do that at home. So, yeah, we're also going to deepen our relationship with our farmers, with Wish, Asa, uh, with Yale, uh, my new friend and my father from the US, and, 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 and do great things together. What we are taking out of this conference and the GT is that we need to come up more with nutritious food that will solve the malnutrition problem in Africa. We also are taking hope 
that we need to become better processed soya manufacturers to our poultry farmers. And we are also going to learn how Charles break TSP ball in Uganda, how Chimazi does it in Lagos, how we do the bread rolls and the sausage thing. And in the next two, three years, four years, when you all come to Ghana, you'll be so proud how we've run with wage in four years and where we are. On those places, I say thank you.